If you're selling anything online, you need to be tracking the efficiency of your funnels. And there's no better way that I can think of to do that than to use some automation and dashboard magic with Airtable. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Hi, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest to you and you want to learn more about how we do that, definitely subscribe to this channel and check out the different resources that we posted below in the description of this video. We do offer a free Airtable crash course that will help you get up and running quickly if that's what you're interested in. But without further ado, let's just jump into my screen here and start talking about the topic of today's video. And that is how are we going to organize opt-ins and sales for some sort of online sale platform, right? Now, a lot of the platforms that you might use already have some sort of like dashboard that they offer, but in my opinion, I haven't found one that I love and I would much rather build something custom that serves my exact purposes in Airtable. So that's exactly what I've done here. And you'll notice that uh, first and foremost, we have a couple of different fields. Uh, of course, we're tracking the client name and the client email. And I should pause here and say that while this is a fake database, I don't want to accidentally uh, give away a, you know, a fake email or anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and blur out stuff that I think might not be uh, in your interest to see. Just know that you, know, you would fill out client name, client email here. Then you're also going to you know, have a status here. Where, where is this lead in your pipeline? Right? Are they have they just opted in? Have they moved further along? Have they, you know, have they booked maybe a, a strategy call with you? What does your pipeline look like? And you can track that status of people here. You might also collect things like phone number, maybe address, depending on what type of marketing you do. And then here's where you're going to notice that we're going to connect to both opt-in and sales. And these are other tables that we have on the back end here. And I'll get to those in just a moment. Now we're also capturing the meta data in terms of when this contact was created and we're rolling up the total revenue. Now you might think that uh, revenue belongs at the sales level and largely that's true, but we also want to trace back and see per contact, you know, we want to see different metrics like how much is our average uh, client spending with us? Maybe we have a number of different offers and we want to know what the average person spends. Also, you know, we might want to know what our average uh, revenue per opt-in is, things like that. And these are all things that we've built in our dashboard. So in order to get this total revenue, of course, we're going to look at our sales relationship here and we're using a roll up field. We're saying, hey, if a sale is connected to a contact, then we want to look at the total amount for that sale and for all those sales and add them up. And that's using the sum values function here. And so for these people up here at the top who've just opted in, of course, we're not seeing any sales, but if we scroll down to the bottom of our database here, where we get into our paying clients, then we start seeing people who are spending 40, 80, $2,000 with us over time. And that, uh, and that's where that, you know, function really kicks in. So let's talk a little bit about the opt-in. We're not capturing a ton of data here, except for who is the person who just opted in? When did they opt in, right? So a date and time. And then also if we have multiple opt-in offers, maybe we have a couple of different funnels for our online business. Well, that's what we are using the form for. So the idea here is that if we had multiple different opt-ins, we would be able to delineate which channel somebody came in through and we would mark that here. Now we're also running a little bit of a, a day's formula here where we're just taking the difference between today and the opt-in date and time and we're trying to get a count for how many days has this person been in our, you know, in our uh, CRM, so to speak. So the nice advantage to this is we can start doing some analysis around how long does it take before a sale is made and things of that nature. So let's go ahead and flip into sales as well. Very high level here. Again, we're capturing the client. Uh, you may have a, an override date or a date, and this is something that we use quite often where, you know, we'll, we'll capture inside of our date here, we'll be using the created time most of the time. But in some cases, we might have some retroactive data that we wanna to add to our database. And so we don't wanna use the created time for that, we wanna use an override date. And so we've built a little bit of logic here that says, hey, if there's an override date specified, then use that date. Otherwise, we're gonna use the created date time. 
And then of course, we're also capturing the type of purchase that was made here. So, you know, did they buy offer one for a discount? Did they buy offer one at the full price? You know, what are our different offers here? And I've just made up some examples here. And then we run a subtotal where we say, well, we know what the price of that offer is. And so we are going to then be able to deduce what the amount of revenue for this particular transaction was. Now you don't have to do this this way. You could record the price first and foremost, and then you would you know, infer what it was that you sold. Either way is fine, right? Because you have an offer and that has a certain amount of money that it's offered for. So whether you're inferring the offer or you're taking the offer and inferring the price or vice versa, same thing either way. And then of course you might in some cases have to issue refunds. You may offer, you know, standalone discounts to these different clients. And so we want to run a total based off of that. So take the subtotal minus any discounts. And uh, of course, if we mark that something has been refunded, then the subtotal will zero out as well. Okay. So that's the high level structure, right? And then the next part is where we start talking about, well, automating it really. So how do we capture all this data? I'm not going to go into super detail on this other than to say that every time we have a new opt-in, we need to record that. That's data that's entered through some sort of a form. So however, you know, whatever software we're using to capture that, we're going to go ahead and build an automation that first looks for the contact. If they already exist, then it will just record a new opt-in against that contact. And if they don't already exist, then it will create a new contact and then record the opt-in. Again, we want to make sure that we're capturing these different pieces of data. What form did they opt in from and when uh, did they opt in? You might also have some other metrics that you're looking at in terms of, you know, what landing page they came in on and other things like that as well. Similarly with sales, depending on what you're using to process payment will drive how you're going to, you know, set this up with automation, but you're effectively doing the same thing. You're comparing it. You're looking for the contact. You're finding them if they already exist. If they don't, you're creating them. And then you're recording a sale against that contact. But let's talk about the fun stuff on this. And that's really the dashboards that we can build. Now, one of the most underutilized, in my opinion, one of the most underutilized dashboards uh, or rather blocks in Airtable is the uh, chime block. And this block is able to set to be set up so that when we have a new record that is added, or a new record that is removed from a particular table that it plays some sort of noise. And uh, I got to say, this one's really fun when you're sitting there at your computer, you're doing some work, and all of a sudden your Airtable on your other screen sends off a ding because you just had a new opt-in or a new sale come through. So it's a pretty cool block. I love having this. And this one, as you see, is set up like this. I'm going to go ahead and play it. And it just has a little bit of a xylophone there. And then this one here is set up similarly for sales. So I can pop into this one and gives me a little bit of a cash register sound effect. So in either case, it's really nice. We have a nice little, uh, you know, auditory clue that, uh, that something's just happened in the business. But the more important stuff I think really comes into doing some more numeric and analytical analysis. So you'll see that we built a, a summary here that's telling us how many opt-ins we've had just for the day. We have another one that's looking at the past seven days, excluding today. So a week prior and then two weeks prior. And then we can also roll up and see the whole month. You can also look at things like, you know, opt-ins over, you know, week over week. So we can see, oh, we had 17, you know, two weeks ago. We had 59 opt-ins just last week or this week. This is looking good. We're trending in the right direction. Similarly, we built out a sales dashboard. And in the sales dashboard, we're looking at things like how many, you know, different, uh, how much revenue have we produced today? In this example, we've done a little over $2,000. Uh, we've done $8,000 worth of sales this month. You know, you might also have a, a chart like this as well. That's breaking it out month over month in terms of revenue. And then, you know, bringing in a little pie chart like this so that we can look at where the majority of our revenue is coming from. You know, is it coming from one or two of our offers? And if so, that's going to be a clear indicator to us that we need to you know, take some steps to push that offer more because that's what's producing the majority of revenue for our business. OK, and then one last thing to take a look at would be what I call the finance dashboard. And two things you're looking at here is what is your average revenue per opt in and what's your average revenue per client? It's great to know how much money you're making per client, right? 
But more importantly, when you know that you're paying, let's say, five, ten dollars for uh, for someone to opt into your online funnel, well, then you also want to know what's the average amount of revenue you're producing when you do get that opt in. All right, so to get these set up, what we're going to do is actually go back to the contacts table and we're going to be looking at this total revenue uh, field here, right? And this field in particular, we are going to set up a new view called paying clients. And in paying clients, we're only looking at, we're only filtering in the clients that have actually spent money with us. And so by, by doing that, we're able to then take an average of this total revenue, and that's in the revenue per client. So let's pop this one open. So we're saying, looking at that specific view of paying clients, look at the total revenue field and take an average. So that's how we know, in this case, 190, almost $195 for this example is what the average client is spending with us. And we're, we're speaking about a client in terms of somebody who's actually spending money, as opposed to an opt-in, which is somebody who has entered our online funnel. And so if we were to look at revenue per opt-in, then of course the big difference here is that we're not looking at the clients only, we're looking at the view that includes all of the different opt-ins. So there are a lot of different ways you can slice this kind of data. You could also look at it month over month if you so chose, but for this simple high level example, we're just gonna do uh, you know, what's the average per opt-in and the average per client. So anyhow, I hope you found that to be super helpful. Please let me know what questions you have below in the comments. And if you're looking for a quick way to get up and running easily with Airtable, be sure to check the different links we include in the description below. As always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, we have a lot of resources that we've put together on our site, so swing on by and see how we can help. We have a blog that includes free content every week. We also built an Airtable free crash course that'll get you up to speed in under two weeks. And if you're looking for something more advanced, you can book some time to have a discussion with me. I will hop on a Zoom call with you and we can talk about what your needs are and how our company might be able to help. So if that's of interest, swing on by. Look forward to connecting with you soon.